Yeah, thanks for joining another coffee break for materials management. My name is Michael Bass. Today I wanted to talk about uh, typical materials management processes and actually a typical, let's say, process, how we can optimize it, what we see in the industry, how, how they do this. And the whole idea is obviously to, to buy the right materials to the right time and deliver this to the right place. And you don't want to have enough, you, do, you want to have enough materials, you don't want to have to less materials, so you don't want to have surplus or shortages. So here I put something together on the whiteboard for you. Uh, so how it started, here's a typical process we see in our industry. So engineering is obviously creating drawings, 3D models, generating drawings. Basically on the drawings there will be informations about material needs. So these informations will be collected into bill of materials. So from a drawing I need 10 meter pipe, in another drawing I need 20 meter pipe, for example. So I can say, now let me, I have here 10 foot of pipe and 20 foot of pipe, and so on and so on. So that's coming from the drawings. Now you want to summarize all these materials requirements into requisitions. So it's a normal, the next step, you summarize material into requisitions, and you say, I want to buy pipe 30 foot. So you summarize it. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. You go then through the purchasing process, where you basically then buy the materials from a supplier in US, wherever you buy it, and that gets delivered. You do shipment and delivery of these items, and by finally it gets delivered to, to the construction site. So you will have then here the, the 30 foot pipe, right? So that's normal. But what happened now when in the meantime the model changed? So for example, suddenly we, we have another 10 foot of pipe. Right? What, what happens then? So in the normal linear process, you then say, OK, I need to buy another 10 foot of pipe. So I need 40, and so on and so on, so that you get another 10 foot delivered. But what happened? In the meantime, materials was damaged, or material is no longer needed, or minuses and surpluses. So that's the reason you want to compare not just between these two different starters, I need 10 foot more, I want to compare everything against everything, almost. That's the reason why actually the warehouse the materials management processes is more a circle. So all these processes are continuous always Cranking. So if I want to analyze how much material I need, I need to go into the 3D model or into the drawings, so basically in the bit of material. So I, I know I need 40. How much is on the requisitions? It's perhaps 30, and so on. So I'm trying to compare all the time with the different processes. And when something was damaged in delivery, perhaps minus 5, then suddenly the system knows, ah, it's not just more 10 I need in the model. It's also now 5 because it was damaged. So actually I need 15 more, right? So make sure I have always, uh, always enough materials um, in the warehouse for, for construction. This whole circle has actually a name, how you do this. So this whole circle is actually simulating, trying to say here, forecast is actually a traditional functions in materials management system to a, a doing a forecast run or do a soft allocation or hard allocation. So these are the typical names to analyzing what do I have in the warehouse? What is what I can build? Are there any shortages? Are there any surpluses? And it will analyze basically in the whole processes. So the difference between these two different pictures, this is a normal process we see, let's say, in the manufacturing industry, where you build something, you need something, you use it. In our industry, EPC industry, in the plant industry, big projects, a lot of change is happening, and that's the reason why in our industry it needs to be more a circle, where all the processes need to be analyzed and compared all the time. Hopefully this was helpful. Thanks. Michael Bass.